Welcome back to Tightwad Workshop. First up, I've had COVID for a couple of weeks and my voice isn't back to normal, so we're just going to have to work our way through this. So it's been over a year since our last four pallet workbench video. And in that time, there's been a lot of fitting and removing of hold fasts and pegs. And in the most used holes, that's tended to uh, wear them a little bit wide. So there's a couple of ways we can use to help hold our pegs in the holes without them falling out. The simplest one's probably you use a piece of wood shaving. So just wedge it in the hole. That works, but you know, sometimes it can be a bit fiddly. Another way is to make specialized bench dogs like this one. It's the same kind of construction as our hold fast, but obviously a bit thinner and shorter. That works fine as a planing stop. Another way is to drill a hole through our bench dog and put a pin through it. That also works fine, but now you have a pin to lose. The last option that I've found which works really well is to insert one of these little captive ball bearings. If you put that up one end, you can either have a high stick out or a low stick out and it'll stay in place quite well. So I found these little ball bearings on these cupboard latches. In a perfect world, these would just be little cylinders with a ball bearing on, but unfortunately my hardware store didn't have anything in stock. So we're gonna to have to do a little bit of work with a hacksaw and file to get what we're after. The cupboard latches have two parts and we only need one of them. We'll be able to harvest two ball bearings from this piece. I'll use a hacksaw to cut the bracket apart. Next we'll need to file off these sharp corners. This metal is mostly zinc, so it's quite soft and easy to file. We need to round the housing off into a cylinder shape so that it'll fit into a drilled hole. Next we need to file a curve into two sides of this surface. I'll explain why in a minute. The housing needs to have the same external contour as the peg, otherwise it'll jam in the dog hole. Now we can cut two new pegs. This drill looks like the right size, but let's test it with some scrap wood first. We want the ball bearing housing to be a nice tight fit in the hole. That looks like it'll work, so let's turn the wood over and use a punch to remove the ball bearing. Now we can mark the hole locations on our new pegs, then drill small pilot holes all the way through them. We don't want to drill the full-sized holes all the way through the pegs, so I'll use some tape as a depth marker. This way I can stop drilling when I get to the tape. We won't be able to rotate the housing once it's hammered into the hole, so make sure you fit it the right way around. You might need a few attempts to hammer it in straight. I know I did. If you hammer it in too far, just turn the peg over and use a punch to knock it back out again. So there you have it. A nice easy little project. And another tool for the workbench. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Tightwad Workshop is filmed in front of a live studio audience.